is up. So today I will try uh, Duolingo Russian as a native Russian speaker. It's gonna be fun, I hope so. I also wanna mention that uh, there are not that many Russians who are able to speak decently or properly in Russian language. I had like a state exam in my school and I had 91 point out of 100. So it's pretty much high, but as you may see, it's not like 100%. And none of my classmates got this 100 points at this exam. Let's see whether I'm able to talk Russian decently or not. Let's get started. So I want to learn, let's find Russian 5, almost 5.4 million learners. It's nice. Uh, I already know some Russian. You are here. Fun fact about Russian is that we could use different word order in a sentence and it will have the same sense. So that's why sometimes for Russian it's kind of hard to learn English even though it's more logical because you have a word order. But in Russian it barely exists. And so uh, in this like app in Duolingo, most of the time they're making the sentences which are okay for beginners to understand that yes, this is the word order. For example, in this case, we could also say <laughs> But it will still have the same sense. Anyway, nicely done, of course. Ivan хочет знать, где Anna. Okay, barely can imagine such situation or sentence in uh, Russian because we don't use um, like full name. Oh, how to say? No, that's like full name, but it's so your name that is written in the passport. But if you're like my bro or friend, I would never say your name is Ivan. I would say Vanya. It's more like Jack or Jackie. Or like my name is, uh, for example, Daniel, or, and I would say Denny. Mm. Um. Is it like cheating or something? Okay, начало декабря. У моего брата есть хорошая куртка. That's all true. My brother has a good jacket. Not sure if this like country is written correctly because it's a Republic of Belarus, as far as I know. But okay, maybe like yeah. We always say, oh yeah, we, we do, we do. Okay, Belarus uh, is a beautiful country. Again, you see, like, this is some sort of inversion, and it sounds more natural in Russian if we say, on this street there is an old wooden house. But I guess it's not possible in English to say so. I mean, it's not right. We actually have names for those days, like the day before yesterday. It doesn't sound like it, it's just one word. <laughs> it's so nice to use. And the same as I find out, it was in Danish. So they also use Iovomon uh, or Ifogos, uh, which means Ifogos means uh, the day before yesterday. Or Iovomon, the next day after tomorrow. Take the cup, please. In this case, this word, it's. Uh, in English, it doesn't translate in Russian at all. It doesn't exist. We mean it, so we don't even pronounce it. The same as we are not pronouncing most of the time this verb uh, to be. Like, I'm here. We would just say, I here. And also put the box. The box. We don't have articles at all. So, a box, the box. Also confusing thing for Russians. Okay, a student. Again, you know, a student. But here it's written just student. Like, Literally. Good for you. Good for you. We don't use it. So, uh, but if you ask me, how can we be sure that we are talking about a precise person, like the person or a person, right? So, in this case, we will use uh, in English it's this or these. Um, so, it means этот, like this. This person or just person. Confusing. For me, in this case, I don't understand why there is no uh, article. Like, will you have a dinner? A dinner. Why it's just a dinner? Mm. Yes, yeah, please. Oh. It's a gossip. Franzuza. Franzuza. Check. I need what you should. Zaklučat. We'll say contract in Russian. My husband and I are moving to Serbia. 
Siberia, sorry. Uh, in a month. Good for you. What? S. S. This is like a little trouble of the program because you would not say S. You would say S. S. Because it's not a letter S. Check. Okay, so we are on unit 31st out of 51. But I'm kind of curious, can I just jump to the last one? To prove that I'm the pro, the prime minister. Again, no article with this Russian. Confused, confused. Pust protest machine. I mean, I know what it means, but I would just say pust. Pust in English, not sure. Should sell his car, I would say so. Nice, this word pust should be not translated at all. How can you become proficient in a language if there are some words that cannot be translated? Doesn't make any sense. This is also a tricky verb in Russian because a lot of Russians, they're not using properly this word. There are two words, nadet and uh, adet. For example, if I say nadet, it means I put glasses on. Let's, let's count it. Um, and if I say uh, adet, it means I put glasses on someone or something. Let's move on. But like... Also, we could say uh, "Mama planirует приезжать в Россию каждое лето." So it's like literally to plan, планировать. Again, it's clear. We just say yes, no, and we just drop those. It is. We just say clear. Передайте книгу. Эту книгу. Sorry, sorry, I just didn't pay attention. And the confusion is that um, in Russian, uh, I asked Jenny, it's like, okay, it's fine, what she thinks, you would translate it like literally, you would translate it to Russian as she thinks, but not thought. We only have three times, I guess, like past, present, future in Russian, and that's it. Otherwise, could you imagine it will be even more complicated? Mm. In Russian, no clouds in sky. <laughs> you see, it's more simple. Uh, we're discussing the concert. Um, we discussing the concert. The results. Thank you, thank you. So, yeah, I guess we finished everything here that could be finished in Duolingo. My conclusion is that this app is pretty good for beginners who would like to learn some basic stuff, you know, like the ground of the language. But at the same time, if you would like to speak properly, very fluently and stuff like that, you need to train your Russian with Russians. It's gonna be more efficient, as I guess with any other languages in the world. I know that our Celeric alphabet uh, can make people confused. Anyway, keep learning new languages. It's a nice thing to have in your life. And just stay strong. See ya.